Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Ricky. And this is the Season 3, Episode 7 episode of the Beer and Broadband Podcast. And it's slated to come out on May 18th, 2020. So, we, last time, we went long. It was a very long, maybe like an hour long. We'll try to keep it down to like under 30 minutes this time <laughs> for everybody. Um, but we've got some like really good uh, beer. Uh, well, I don't know about, it, it's the, that's subjective as to whether or not it's good. But we've got an interesting topic about beer and then... We're actually going to do something where I know a lot about something, and Ricky doesn't know as much, so we're not able to converse about it as much, but it'll be a little bit more question and answer on on topics around, like, a media server and, uh, you know, having uh, the streaming options through 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 the Plex app and uh, some of the other, like, apps that, that Plex has put out to be able to do certain things, so... Um, it's going to be an interesting show that's going to be a bit of a departure, I think. But first, let's talk about the Peanut Butter Jelly Time Raspberry Brown Ale. And this is a beer um, that is from Catawba Brewing Company. I think I pronounced that right, Catawba. Uh, but it's a, it's a North Carolina brewery, I believe. Um, let me just make sure I'm right. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's, yep. So they're from Morganton, Morgan, Morganton, North Carolina, man, I, I slaughtered, but it's the peanut butter jelly time raspberry brown. It's a 5.7% ABV. It says on the can, nutty, sweet, nostalgic, uh, on the top. And I don't see any other description on it other than it says, uh, it's an L brewed with raspberry peanut so if you're allergic to peanuts please do not drink this beer um otherwise you should have had a moment to take a sip of it ricky what do you think yeah i'm gonna admit it's not a terrible beer in the sense like it's not offensive like i didn't spit it out um i do not like this at all I would let me tell you not. why <laughs> this has almost a perfect storm mix of flavors that individually are good, but together are awful. <laughs> it has like it does have that kind of almost like nuttiness from peanut butter. You don't get much of the peanut flavor, but you know, just like nuts in general have like a ligamentish flavor. Same thing with like beans. It's kind of similar. There's an earthiness there. And it's got that sweetness from the raspberry, but it doesn't come through raspberry, it just comes through a sweet. And then like the hops in it give it that green flavor. And it just tastes like sweet peas to me. Like, this tastes like a sweet pea beer. <laughs> that is not the flavor I get from it at all. Now, are you drinking it directly from the can? No, I poured it, it I yeah, poured it into a little glass. Okay. So, um, I've, I have, I, I've had a sip from the, from the can, and it definitely is more uh, hoppy and uh, everything from the can. And I, and I will admit, I don't like beer at all. Um, but it is an interesting beer. Because for some reason, it tastes like I'm drinking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that has very bitter bread. It, you know, like to to me, whenever I, I I take a sip of it, and every time I like I go back for another sip because I'm like, how did they get that nutty? peanut butter and jelly flavor in there with this. And I mean, of course they say they put the fruit and the peanut butter and everything in mm -hmm. there. Um, but it's just, it's a very well-crafted beer. I think it is not the beer for me. Um, yeah, I've drank, I mean, I've drank a few. Of them. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have any of those, like again, offensive flavors, you know, there's not, you know, the sort of kind of, it's not even bitter, like the hotness you get when something's not brewed right, you know. None of that's there. It's just the flavors do not mix very well. I mean, I can no. maybe see the bitter sandwich idea if instead of it being peanut butter and jelly, it's that, like, already pre-mixed peanut butter and jelly they used to try and sell you mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Where, you're like, you, they all just kind of taste the same. So, like, 
when you smell the beer, what do you get out of it? It does smell like peanuts. I'll give yeah. it that. It has a very pleasant aroma. It um, does. But just the taste is not as good. No, it's not. It's not. Well, it not not for me. If you're if you're interested in something like this and you think, man, those guys are crazy. This this is this is the kind of beer I think would be great to drink. You should definitely try this beer. I I don't think it's for everybody though. Um, but I I would I mean like if if there was a category that was like most creative use of an ale or something like that, I would do this. This is this is a very well made beer, and it's like one of those that whenever I drink it and contemplate it, I'm kind of like, okay, I got this. I got where they were going with this. Mm-hmm. I don't like it, but I got it. I yeah. I can drink that, you know, or I'll, I'll drink that. I would I I would never choose this beer as the one that I would drink if I was going to do something. But now let me poise this question: If you were going to make something with this would you cook with it mm. i'd struggle to find something good for that maybe you know there's sometimes these like peanut butter brittles that they'll have like a little bit of alcohol in them mm-hmm. maybe that because i think there is still some there's definitely a lot of peanutty in the aroma i think with some actual other peanut stuff it could mix in well. The thing for me, I think, sends me over the top is just there's a decent amount of hops present, and that greeny hop flavor just takes me out of peanuts and jelly and puts me straight into vegetables. Yeah, like yeah, well, I totally much. get you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's totally there. <laughs> yeah, this is this would be akin to if you had handed me like a broccoli stout and like, all right, I mean, novel idea. <laughs> So I think that if um, if I wanted to do something like some sort of like sweet fish or like pork, I could actually b- like pour this in and come to like a right a right kind of flavor for that to be. Because I've made some some dishes that I can see these flavors working with. It wouldn't be the first thing. It would just be like if I had this mm-hmm. and I needed to do something with it. So like somebody gave me like you know twelve of them, and I was like, man, I'm not going to drink all like pour it down the drain you know uh, i would start coming up with ways to to cook with it you know making desserts or something like that try to or you know fish fish i can i can see fish or pork working with this if you yeah i'm having a harder sell on the meat but i could definitely see like baking or like candy making with it i think so uh, i think if you put some brown sugar and um, like you made, you know, like, uh, use this instead of like orange juice, maybe for like a, um, uh, uh, where you, you do a marinade for some pork with some other spices, you could get like some nice flavors out of that. It would be, you would have to put like vinegar and stuff in it. It wouldn't be this liquid all yeah. by itself. Yeah. You'd have to, I guess, yeah, I guess that's why I struggle to see is I feel like if you had to use it, yeah, you could, you'd have to cover it up to, to some extent with other stuff. I definitely can't see it being my ideal. I don't know. Maybe I'm my more wasteful. If I had the twelve pack, I'd make like a thing of peanut brittle and then I'd pour the rest out. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are more wasteful. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about uh, Plex Media Server. Hi. Uh, so, <laughs> as you can see, we were about to start talking about Plex. We filmed or filmed. We recorded the whole episode, and things got a little bit messed up. You could barely hear me talking. You can hear it in the beginning, especially um, as we're going through. I'll start blanking out a little bit as I'm talking about the beer and everything. And then um, the clipping gets just way worse (laughs) through the recorded episode. So we decided to uh, re-record things. So um, sorry about that, everybody. It was the best episode we've ever recorded. We had lots of feedback, constant questions from Ricky about everything. It was awesome. Right, Ricky? I won't say maybe the best episode, but it was a good one. <laughs> Don't feel like you guys missed out too too much. No, it was it wasn't. It, it, you're not missing out too too much. But what what we talked about specifically was Plex, and Plex has a couple of new apps, um, uh, and then you know Plex also has the media server with HD Home Run and live TV and things like that. Um, well, so. 
uh, let, let me back up a little bit. I set my Plex back up because after I had moved about a year ago, I had taken the uh, media tuner portion of my Plex server out. And so I took my Plex, set it back up, and set it, well, it's, it's been set up, but I set it back up to record TV, to record live TV. And um, so now I've got it set up where it's recording TV, it's taking the commercials out for me. It's, I mean, it's really like, a pretty awesome thing and i've got some pretty low spec um it's like an old nook that i've got with just a uh, with a jbod attached to it that's running it and it runs it just fine uh, it chokes a little bit on some um higher content stuff but it'll transcode and things like that no problem um so i've i've been thoroughly enjoying it but then the live tv portion is just it's just like the icing on the cake because it does everything. Uh, and I can access it from any of the devices that I have, whether I'm at home or not, any device over the network. I can watch TV uh, and I can record. And I have um, four, basically, antennas. So my tuners have two tuners in each one. I have two tuners, so that's two plus two equals four, right? Uh, and I can record one and watch TV on the others. Um, so, and, and last time you had some questions about that. I don't remember if you remember what those questions were. I don't remember what those questions were, but <laughs> I'll ask you a new one. So I'm, I'm catching on to it. So for the live TV, is that just catching only public broadcast or do you have it picking up TV broadcast from like your actual cable equipment? I don't have cable. Um, I got rid of cable a long time ago because anything that I wanted to watch, there's a there's very few shows that I wanted to watch on cable that I wouldn't just buy like on Amazon Prime or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of the live TV that I want to watch, that's uh, over the air, um, is uh, non cable stuff. However, um, if you want to go and and get one of these, there's uh, the HD Home Runs. Uh, that you can put cable cards in and so you can buy a cable card from the cable company and just connect it up and uh, It'll do the same thing Gotcha So then you're mostly using your antennas just for like the public broadcast channels. Yeah. Yeah, okay. absolutely um, and, and I get like 70 or 62 or something like that channels around here um, you know and it's uh you know all the local channels you know the abcs the, yeah yeah and then and then uh you know uh, w um whatever the the one that has like arrow and flash and things like that on it the cw yeah and yeah. um and i get like telemundo and things like that and pbs a lot of the things that i want to watch anyways are, are broadcast on P pbs so I get to watch them there and then I get to, you know, uh, record them for later. Cause I don't, I'm not always available to watch whenever I want to watch the show. Uh, you, so, so the show's broadcasting. I, I, I screwed that up. You know, flip, flip it around, reverse it kind of deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, is the show's broadcasting when either I'm asleep or I'm doing something else or, you know, and I, I don't, I like the DVR function of it where I can just record and then if I don't want to keep the show, I can just, you know, erase it. Okay. So that's still pretty cool. It's like just like DVR, essentially, for the broadcast channel. Well, for whatever channel you have set it to. It'll do cable or anything like that. It just depends on what type of tuner you're feeding into it. Yeah, yeah. I just meant like in, in your particular case. Right. Yeah. right. And, well, and I can watch TV on it, too, if I want to. So I can either watch live TV or record it whichever one I want to do. Um, and I can watch, I could have three right now, the way I've got it set up, I can have three devices, but if I wanted to have more, I just add more tuners. Mm -hmm. I buy a tuner, put it into my, put it on my network and then Plex will be able to pull the information off of the tuner. So the, oh. the other, the other thing that I had is that Plex, you know, before it was just whatever your media is that you're putting on there, whatever your live TV is, mm -hmm. and they would um, have that 
set up to um, pull in and then distribute your media, which is great. That's the fun that's the prime functionality. But some people don't have the equipment to have a, a server, and so they can create a Petplex account and take advantage of their streaming um, TV shows and movies. So they have like um, a, a set of movies that they partnered with people to be able to stream and host on their on their servers that they have at their in their like corporate offices and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. That, I yeah, we talked about that in, in links earlier. But I think that's maybe one of my favorite things about the new Plex stuff is, you know, at, at some level, some people are going to be turned off, I think, on having to set up their own servers. Even though it's not that hard and it doesn't cost that much money, it's still, you know, it's more effort than popping into your Netflix or popping into your Disney Plus or anything like that. Which are all paid services. But that you can get a free little Plex account and have access to some media. You know, that's pretty nice. I mean, that makes, you know, long car rides if you're in the passenger seat a lot easier. You've got free streaming from somewhere, you know, especially as, you know, people are locked in quarantine. I think you said it also has, you know, mostly older stuff, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Cause I feel like a lot of these uh, streaming services, because the older stuff isn't quite as profitable, are getting rid of those, like weird selection changes to try and just have all the kind of like newer, more modern stuff. So if you like some of that older media or, you know, that's media from your childhood, that might be some like really good stuff you find. I think it's good stuff. I, I thoroughly enjoy the older things that they have on there. Cause they have stuff like, um, some older, um, some older movies that, uh, didn't necessarily do as good. Like some old, um, Bruce Willis movies and things like that. Let me, uh, let me open up the Plex app and I'll, uh, I'll give you a, a list of things that I've seen on there, um, that I thought were, were pretty good. Um, I think, I think one of the things that, um, really gets me going with it is that, um, it, I, so I have the best of both worlds, right? Um, I, I get to be able to take the things that I have that I've paid for and I can use and I can put them on my Plex media server. I mean, of course it's stuff that like either I got off of GOG or something like that. Um, and, and then, um, you know, or, or maybe I got it from, um, sorry, I'm trying to trying to do two things at once. And so I'm just fumbling through this in a horrible, horrible fashion. Uh, cause you know, gotta, gotta sign into accounts and do all these other things that, mm -hmm. that makes it easy to, to make this stuff happen. Um, but, uh, what, what I was saying is I get the best of both worlds. I get some streaming stuff, even though it's older and I get some things that, um, you know, I paid for, and um, so th therefore I'm able to, you know, take that off of like my DVD or something and put it on my um, server, and I can make that available to my whole family and on all their devices or every like TV or anything like that. You know, we can we we can watch whatever we want to um, together. And so, like, um, they have different channels on here, too. It's not just, um, like, they have, like, Crackle and other things like that that you can add to it. Uh, and I think it was a partnership with Crackle to be able to do these things. But, like, they have the old Clue movie on here and The Saint. And, um, oh, what's the, the, um, the other one that I saw on here the other day? Uh, that... I used to love to watch, and I haven't watched in a while. Uh, and then they've got some newer things. Oh, Walking Tall. They've got that. And then they've got a bunch of anime on here, like Ghost in the Shell and Street Fighter and things like that um, that are kind of classics. Um, and I don't see the TV shows uh, right off the bat where uh, they've got some good comedy specials, Third Rock from the Sun, Star Trek Generations, um, stuff, stuff like that, uh, are just, they're, they're on here. Like I said, not the newest stuff, mm -hmm. but, um, it's, it's good stuff. And they've got like a lot of good documentaries, 
Uh, so like uh, the one about the people that like to make the DeLoreans and stuff like that, they've got on here, uh, and I don't remember what the name of it, but I watched it the other day. It's just, it's good stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and, but then I can also have my music on here, and that kind of leads into the next thing. So I can take the, the CDs that I buy, and I can, oh, I just bumped the mic, sorry. Uh, I can take the CDs that I buy, and I can listen to the high quality versions of those. Um, and unfortunately you have, you really haven't played with this app too much, but this one, um, basically if you, it, I mean, even if you don't use it for video, if you just set up, I mean, you can set up any sort of server and you can access your media using the, um, Plex amp, I think is what it's called. Um, yeah, Plex, Plex amp. Um, you can use Plex amp, and uh, you can access any of your music anywhere, and it'll play FLAC and, um, you know, any high-quality music format, or even it'll play even the lo lossy ones, but it'll also play lossless audio. Yeah. And so for, like, an audiophile like me, uh, who likes to be able to have their cake and eat, eat it too, in a sense, with this stuff, I want to be able to stream music, but I also want to have it in, like, high-quality and I kind of want to own it. I don't want to when it goes off of a platform like, so one of my favorite bands, The Sword. I like to listen to their music all the time. I like to listen to it in high quality. Some people would say, well, you know, there's no point in that. But for me, there is. And, you know, like I'll bust out a headset um, and, you know, put it on the phone, listen to whatever I want to listen to. And I'm happy. Um, and I can I can tell some difference between, uh, you know, like 120 128 kilobit mp3 file and a um 44 um hertz um flat file you know like for me i can tell the difference or it seems at least i seem like i can and i enjoy listening to uh you know I, I throw on one of my um my sets of sennheiser headsets that we've talked about on this channel and you know like i enjoy enjoy listening to it i, I got um you know, the, the shit, uh, Modi and, uh, Magni snack. And so sometimes I'll throw it on there. Well, this is a way I can have all that stuff centrally served and I don't have to have like create playlists on like a bunch of different programs. Like with FUBAR, I have to have a playlist on FUBAR on one computer, on another, on another with Plex amp, I can just install it on multiple computers and all my stuff's there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, that I, I really, like that and you had asked a couple of questions about like can you share the music with other people and yeah if they have a plex account they can hop in and you can share your server and you can say i just want to share my music app or my music playlists and everything with them and they have access to your it'll just show up on their dashboard as something yeah you, yeah we thought we talked about them. that and my idea was like if you've got like a small group of friends or like an audio club you can share music now that we're talking about more, I'm thinking a little bit more about it. Have you ever been like the recipient of that? Have you ever listened to somebody else's music? Well, I I don't have any other friends that um, are into music like I am and have a media server. Gotcha. So, and th this is a fairly new thing for me. So. Yeah, I might have to send one up just to do some testing on that because, like, for your particular use case, you kind of got all of this data local to you streaming speeds when you're in the home very fast so you don't have to really worry about data rates or packet loss because you're just streaming from the server you you've kind of got connection to or i guess no, maybe you can emulate this if you've ever been very far away from your media server i'm wondering yeah. how does that audio quality hold up if you're streaming it live as opposed it'll, to it'll cache it it it, it caches it locally on your device. Okay. Um, yeah. And 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 it also in the in the app if you feel like, well, I'm going to be in a place where I don't have good reception, like my cell phone doesn't have good reception, or I don't have network connectivity. You can download stuff to your phone, so videos, music, whatever. Okay. To your to your phone or your tablet or whatever. Computer, and does that have like some sort of timeout? Because I know like that's where a lot of streaming services hit. Like legally, they can only uh, let it stay on the device for so many hours. Nope. Wow, There's no time out. It's, it's it's your stuff, <laughs> you know. So it's yeah, not... it, yeah, it's your stuff until you share it. But then yeah, you're right. It's not really Plex's business then. 
Yeah. It's not Plex's business. And even then, it's not like it's not like I'm charging someone to be able to share it. I'm not mm-hmm. saying, Hey Ricky, I'm I'm gonna I wanna share this with you and we're gonna share like our libraries back and forth and you know like you can listen to some of my playlists and I can do this and I can do that. And you are gonna have full access you're gonna pay me ten dollars a month it's not like that and and also like i'll have thousands of songs in my library but i don't have every song that's ever been made yeah right so um it's uh, and i'm i'm not uh, i bought a cd so i have a license to have that and you know you can that that's no different than having like your friends like be able to like make a mixtape or like you did in the past or anything like that. Uh, I know that the RIAA would say, well, that's different, but look, I bought this. It's not like I'm like, I don't have a physical copy of it. I, I paid for a physical copy of this. Yeah. And if you come over to my house and I play it, you're still listening to it. Excuse yeah. Me. That gets into those kind of muddy and stupid rules, the media sharing thing, but you're right. You know, it's no really different than if, you would let just someone borrow a CD from you. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, I mean, it, if they want the music, they can go out and, and buy it. Um, and they, it's, Plex isn't letting them have their own copy of it. They can only listen to it on Plex. Yeah. You know, so. Excuse me. I need to take a sip of water. I'm about to, like, cough out the, uh, the thing here. It's terribleness. <laughs> But yeah, so um, that that's the way that works. And they have one more app that they set up that's called Plex Amp that, uh, or Plex, Plex Dash that lets you have a dashboard for your server so you can see how well it's performing. And there were some other things like, um, I think it was called Tatuli or something like that, that ran that um, did some of those things uh, the same way that, that Plex does um uh, now with their plex dash but it didn't it 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 gave you like play counts and what media was actually playing and things like that excuse me i just keep coughing i got i got um we did some grass cutting this morning Mm. and i got into some stuff and then i had a cigar afterwards i sat outside and and smoked a cigar and drank a beer and now now i'm all like choked up (laughs) about everything it's got me it got me good but um yeah so the the dash i think it's the last thing that we're talking about but it is it was like a really fun portion of of things because like for a nerd like me i like to be able to see all the stats of how my server's doing Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah though that is plex in a nutshell now you can you have three three uh apps that you can use uh, Plex Dash, which is kind of the same thing as the dashboard um, that you have on the Plex. Uh, that when you're when you're looking at it through the um, web app, you can see mm-hmm. a lot of stats about your thing. It's kind of the same. It's it gives you a little bit more information about logs and things like that for your server. And then you have the music from Plex Amp, which also plays high quality audio. And I really think I think you would enjoy having Plex Amp, even though you don't buy too much music. Uh, it, being able to buy music and then rip it, I think <clears throat> knowing how much you like um, esoteric stuff, if you can get your hands on that stuff and then and and you know put it in like a flat format and then be able to have it wherever you want it, that's like that's nice. It's very it's it's not just nice. It it's it's a little bit different than what like the use case for streaming is because like yeah. with Spotify or you know, Google play music or something like that. When you're, when you've got that stuff, somebody else owns that music. You don't own it. You're just licensing. You're paying Spotify $10 a month to use their licensed music. Uh, and they've got a a deal worked out to where they're paying somebody else money and they get like $2 out of your $10 and then they pay, you know, like artists like cents out of whatever you listen to, you know? So, with with that stuff, um, you're not really directly contributing as much to the artist. But if you buy a CD, you're actually like giving the artist generally money. Like if I buy a CD, normally I'm buying it directly. 
from the artist nowadays. If I get it from a store or Amazon or something like that, the artist is still getting um, a decent cut comparatively out of that out of that that you're so you, you know you're you're giving them some money and then you're able to enjoy that in perpetuity. You don't until the the item that you bought breaks. Um, you can just continue to enjoy that, and so that physical media has, I think, uh, still a place in in something like this, where you've got that that CD or whatever, you've got that recording of things that you really like. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, anyways, um, that's all I had to say about that. Is that all all you wanted to say about it? Yeah, I think that covers it. Okay, cool. Well, this was season three. Episode 7 of the Beer and Broadband Podcast. Uh, thanks for sticking through the, the first seven minutes with all, and, and getting to this point. I'm glad that you were. Uh, and we will catch you next time.